AYR Wellness, AYRWF stock. Is AYRWF stock a good buy? There's some interesting things that could potentially be happening with Florida and with federal medical rescheduling. In the meantime, AYR Wellness themselves printing some solid numbers. They just printed a solid increase in EBITDA, which is awesome. Let's see if they can continue that. Their metrics look pretty solid, and I think they probably could. But then when you start factoring in federal medical rescheduling, all of a sudden, all of Florida gets really interesting. Next, Florida itself might flip to adult use. Then all of Florida gets really, really interesting. Let's jump in. I want to show you a couple charts. This is one of my favorite stocks, not exactly in my top pick, but people often ask me, you know, what's a good one to choose? And I always point to these guys. They are so undervalued based on book alone. Let's check out a few charts. Here's a look at AYR Wellness Revenue. Did not see an increase in revenue this quarter. This is contrary to a bunch of the other charts that I'm seeing from a bunch of other companies. These guys have not printed an increase. Uh, I've seen many of the bigger companies increase this quarter, uh, going over top of what they printed in March 2023, uh, Q1. So this was kind of a surprise, but it's not really that much. If you look, the charts are pretty fairly consistent. But... If a Florida were to flip, all of a sudden, that would change everything as to who could be a customer in Florida. Now, there is a uh, right now the Florida State Supreme Court is looking at something that the uh, state's attorney general said. This is this ballot is invalid because it goes beyond a single issue and therefore it's unconstitutional it can't be on the ballot the florida state supreme court has not exactly been overwhelmingly awesome to this industry they would probably err towards the state supreme uh, attorney general so i haven't really put a whole lot of emphasis on this simply because until the Florida State Supreme Court gives the nod to the ballot itself versus the state attorney general, it doesn't seem like a 50-50 probability or better in favor of this thing moving forward. So I haven't really put a whole lot into it just yet. Regardless, we know that federal medical rescheduling is on its way, which all of Florida is medical. Therefore, companies such as AYR, TrueLeave, and so many others, uh, Verano's down there, there's a bunch down there, um, would, as soon as it goes into law, as soon as Joe Biden does his executive order, this shifts profitability because these companies are able to write off certain costs that they can't write off right now, the, the infamous 280E. So although... AYR Wellness has printed a slightly less than hoped for revenue. What they did do was really squeeze a whole bunch of orange juice out of rocks and their metrics improved. But moving forward, should they continue with that and with medical federal rescheduling, things are going to be moving forward. We don't know yet on Florida. Let's see. Gross margins. Healthy move higher, almost hitting 50. Um, should they get like to 55 or so? That would be huge. If Florida were to flip, all of a sudden all those dispensaries, now anybody can walk in there. So the ability to move more people through the same dispensary increases significantly. So your marginal profits skyrocket. This could be interesting just in that regard. Uh, operating efficiencies, you do want a chart that's moving lower and lower and lower. They're about 52%. This means that sales, general, administrative, the back office, it, on a cost ratio, total, uh, total operating costs divided over top of total revenue. Cost ratios, you want to see them go as low as possible. This tells us how much the corporate office is uh, earn, uh, spending 
relative to revenue. So yeah, you want to see this move as low as possible. They're fairly wheelhouse. If we saw considerable moves higher in revenue, the mathematics kind of dictate that yes, this would move lower as long as they keep their costs contained. But here's the big jump in EBITDA. It's their second best quarter. Earnings before interest, taxation, depreciation, amortization. Huge that they had such a big move higher. It basically tells us that they are executing a plan. The plan is actually working. They're getting repeat customers coming in and uh, their core product is profitable. Producing the product, running the company. The next layer, that third layer, is cost of financing, and that's where net uh, net losses are right now. But the EBITDA was such a huge print, this was solid. Remember, they did not push revenue higher. Gross margins went higher. That's where that was. If we see operating efficiencies improve and that chart decline, this chart here, EBITDA, goes up even further. Total equity, still on a downhill slope here. This is a lot of companies that are printing negative net earnings. They have to borrow that money somehow. These guys, AYR, maintain a fairly consistent cash level. That just funds their daily operations and they have sufficient cash. So whenever they take a net loss, they just take on more debt. You want to see this turn around. This is your future as long as you're not going negative say a couple other companies I could think of. Um, there's also mark to market with a lot of short-term securities here. When we see any kind of increases, total equity will probably increase as well. What I wonder is all these other companies that a lot of companies, it's very incestuous. These guys have made deals with other companies and they're valuing that so should we see stock prices climb significantly? Is it possible that you'll see some companies take their money and run booking that cash so they don't see the valuation move lower? I'm not sure how a bunch of these companies are structured to do that. Should be interesting, but I expect total equity to start kind of moving higher regardless. Uh, here is revenue projections for AYR. And for 2024, the analysts are expecting a pretty decent move higher than, of course, 2025, even more so. And when we start looking backward at, say, uh, gross margins, if you're able to push more product through a dispensary because more foot traffic, gross margins will improve. They're pretty good right now. Their EBITDA profits are pretty solid right now. If we start moving the needle by, say, 10% increases in revenue, that gives the bottom line a lot more to work with. And these are numbers. So when I look at that and say, you know, a lot of these companies are right there on the cusp, just getting so close. Within the next two years, a lot of these companies are really going to be starting to take off. Federal medical rescheduling still has about a year until Biden does his signature. He'll probably do it in June of next year. So we're going to see probably at least three more financial releases from all these companies that are just on the cusp. So all through the next year or so, my expectation is that we start to see a lot of momentum and people are starting to look at these numbers and say, what's going on? Who are the winners? Who are the losers? Who are the laggers? Can't make it. AYR, these guys are moving higher and higher. Yeah, I'd like to see that revenue pop a little better, but they did a pretty good job with gross margins. They'll probably keep their costs on operating costs lower. And given that EBITDA profits kind of move higher as well, you'll start to get real close to net earnings positive. This is huge, but AYRWF stock definitely not does not have the monopoly on the massive slides we've seen since just say December of last year. Um, this is a stock, like I've said, way undervalued when you look at 
their total equity versus their stock price on a book value. You don't really trade on book value, but you do ask the question, how much do they have in valuation and what can that turn into? Given that, AYR is way undervalued when it comes to looking from that per angle, that perspective. But given what was likely to happen in pay, probably about six weeks, then a continuation over a course of, say, nine more months beyond that, we're going to see this gap get filled up real quick. Um, I don't expect a big, massive pop all at once. I expect a pop. Then I expect things to settle down. Then I expect a bunch of churning as investors start nibbling more and more. And the bigger players who are precluded from getting into some of these stocks because it's federally illegal, those things are going to start to shift. It's a good time to start looking at who the potential winners and losers are going to be. AYR, definitely in the winner column. Make sure you hit that like and follow button. We'll see you in the next video.